I believe the m and covered many critical issues facing staff nurses in the NICU, and I was one of the people who participated in the process. Can it use fine-tuning? I'm sure it can. But I believe staff nurses should continue to be an integral part of this process. Ancillary personnel are necessary for us to do our jobs. It's impossible to concentrate on a sick patient when you have to worry about getting meds that should be stocked, having enough respiratory therapists to make vent changes, and x-ray techs to do films. While you're caring for the patient and the family, you shouldn't have to answer the phone, go to the doorbell for our locked unit, and search for supplies. This is common. 25 years ago, we barely saved babies born at 28 weeks. Now we save 23 weekers. These advances have come with changes in the way we, these babies are cared for. NICUs are unique in that most have teams, including nurses, who physically leave the facility to pick up and transport ill babies. Transports can take anywhere from two to six hours. What do you think happens to that transport nurse's assignment while she's gone? We also retro babies back to level two nurseries closer to home which is good for the patient and their family, and it's good for us because it opens our beds. But again, it is nurses who transport and monitor those babies back. And those retros, if you go to Cape Cod Hospital, it's almost four hours. It doesn't matter whether the baby's stable or not. Again, that assignment needs to be covered. Deliveries are sometimes planned, but they're often emergencies. We need to go to deliveries and take babies on a moment's notice. This can include one, two, or even three babies. There is no ER or PACU to hold them till you're ready. Basically, it's always an unknown, a full-term baby gone bad at delivery or a 23-weeker who doesn't breathe. All deliveries are basically a resuscitation. We give these babies surfactant for their lungs and it can lead to pneumothoraces and pulmonary hemorrhages. The skin for babies under 27 weeks is about two cells thick and fluids pour out of their bodies, requiring frequent weights, labs, and fluid changes. Often with central lines, which as you know, have new policies that are very time consuming each time you change a line. Um, imagine keep, if we don't have a central line, you have to keep an IV in a baby who weighs a pound. And in these babies, if you miss an infiltrate, they can lose a limb. Um, it, it's a huge difference. In the last six to 10 years, it's been discovered that too much oxygen can damage their lungs and lead to retinopathy of prematurity and even blindness. We now have O2 sat ranges of 87 to 95. This is when babies are in oxygen. It doesn't matter if it's invasive or non-invasive ventilation. Do you know how difficult it is to keep those babies in those ranges? These babies aren't restrained. Most of them are too small to be swaddled and they can have hundreds of high and low alarms a day that need to be responded to. Late preterm babies can be the sickest. They can have meconium aspirations and pneumonias. Um, we now cool babies who've had neonatal asphyxia either in utero or at deliveries. We can salvage damage to their brains by cooling them, but it requires temps every five minutes. A six to 10 pound baby can be overcooled very quickly causing more damage. This is one example of when a patient needs two nurses for the first eight to 12 hours. My last example is our society is dealing with a huge drug problem and we have not escaped this. These babies are the saddest. They cry and cry and cry until they're captured with narcotics. Even then they have the most sensitive nervous systems and they can seize. Their family issues are one story. In most families, if you think about it, on top of us taking care of this baby, we have two grieving parents and extended family who have had a birth plan that has suddenly gone wrong. They've had no time to prepare, and this is their brand new baby. Each baby is like having three patients, at least initially. One external issue in units is that units with 35 beds, but the hospital staffs for 26, with no concrete plan, of how they're going to staff up when you go to 35 babies. Um, I think too that DPH needs to look at making a priority if some NICUs are trying to create level two beds because um, not all babies have a level two facility to be able to go home to closer to home and many of them stay in the city. I'm, you know, nursing <coughs> is a dying art 
and I'm sad that our profession has taken this turn to need a law to determine staffing. <laughs>